and Gisa Iina Cascavel is known as a well-recognized vehicle originating from Brazil, manufactured by Angisa. It was designed to replace the long-established MS Greyhound fleet of Brazil. E-9 was widely exported and remains the most numerous cannon arm reconnaissance vehicles. Due to its heavy armament, it can also serve as a fire support vehicle. Besides the Cascavel, was also produced the Urutu, which series with Cascavel largely of mechanical components, although it is actually a vehicle uses completely different. Both entered production in 1974 and are now operated by over 20 nations in South America, Africa, and the Middle East. Rise to the design was also sold to the United States via the FMC Corporation. About 2,767 Cascavels and Urutus were manufactured before Angesa ceased operations in 1993. Throughout the early 1960s, Brazil's bilateral defense agreements with the United States ensured easy access to a post-war surplus of American military equipment, including a number of World War II vintage MS Greyhound armor cars. The Brazilian arms industry limited itself to restoring and maintaining this obsolete hardware until 1964, when American involvement in the Vietnam War placed restrictions on the amount of defense technology available for export. Brazil responded by creating an indigenous import substitution program in 1968 aimed at reproducing U.S. equipment already in service. Cascavel design was started in July 1970 and 10 vehicles were delivered between 1972 and 1973, with more production vehicles delivered in 1974. The first production Cascavel vehicles were armed with 37mm guns taken out of M3 stored light tanks, and the first export vehicles were armed with a S90 turret produced by CNMP Berthes of France. Later production vehicles had a new Brazilian design turret carrying a Belgian 90mm Crocodile Mark III cannon produced under license as the EC90 in Brazil. All EE9 Cross Cavell's layout are based on the World War II era USMS Greyhound Scout car, a boxy, boat shaped vehicle. The EE9 Cascavel has a steep frontal glasses, which slopes upwards and back towards the horizontal hull roof, with recesses for the headlamps and a thick glasses plate over the driver seat. The hull sides are nearly vertical, but also sloped inwards towards the roof. There is a low, well-rounded turret on the forward section of the hull, with a long, tapered gun barrel and a cheaper buffer merger break. The EE9 uses a similar 6x6 square base with boomerang suspension for the rear wheels. A crew of three consists of a driver seated in the front of the hull and a commander and gunner who seated in the turret. The engine is mounted at the rear of the vehicle. The dual harness steel armor protects the EE9 from 12.7 rounds over the frontal arc and small arms fire and shell splinters all around. An NBC system is not fitted. Six smoke grenade launchers are attached to the turret. The Cascavel Mark II has a manual turret, but all later variants have electrically powered travels. Cascavel Mark III are equipped with an Engesa EC90 90mm gun firing high explosive, high explosive anti tank, or high explosive squash head shells in cartridge form. A coaxial 7.62mm machine gun is also mounted to the left of the main armament. The EC90 has an elevation of plus 15 degrees and a depression of minus 8 degrees. 
It is not stabilized and only mounts a rudimentary optical fire control system, which has been upgraded with a laser range finder in Brazilian service. Late production gas cables were fitted with run flat tires and a unique central tight pressure regulator accessible from the driving compartment. The EE9 armor reconnaissance vehicle has a rather powerful armament and can be also used for direct fire support or destroy hostile armor vehicles. The Cascavel can easily destroy various armor personnel carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, and other armor vehicles, except main battle tanks. Brazil still maintains its Cascavels for reconnaissance duties, with the biggest operational part today of around 600 vehicles. Like other vehicles of the same type, the Cascavel compensates for its lack of armor with very good mobility. Having a top speed of 110 km per hour, still in service in several countries and currently runs a program to modernize the EE9 as well as the EE11, enabling them to remain in service for some time. The Cascavel was well tested in combat. The Iraqi Cascavels were especially numerous in Saddam's arsenal by 1991, with 400 vehicles in service. However, they were never paid for due to the U.S. invasion, creating a late loss of $200 million for its manufacturer. Many were destroyed during the Iran-Iraq war, in Operation Desert Storm, and later during the Iraqi war in 2003. The surviving vehicles are still in service with the new Iraqi army. Their armor could not cope with armor piercing rounds fired by the standard issue 20mm auto cannons of the Bradley and LAF 25. The second largest part of vehicles was acquired by Libya with 500 vehicles, largely used in the Chadian Libyan conflict. The Chadians managed to capture five vehicles which are no longer in service. Libyan Cascavels were also well used in the Libyan Civil War. Other operational uses include the Second Congo War, the internal conflict in Burma, and Colombian Civil War. Brazil is the main user of the EE9. Many have been exported to South America, Africa, and the Middle East. The E9 is not used by the Western nations except for Cyprus. No other Brazilian armor vehicle ever had such success on the international market. Relatively simple and affordable, the E9 Cascavel came as a solution for emerging local powers to secure a fast response vehicle suited for flat, dry expenses where armor cars are more at ease than tanks. My video about EE9 Cascavel is over. Goodbye and see you again in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you very much.